what brought me to Islam is me trying to convince someone else to become a Christian. Now that Hi guys, you welcome back. My name is Good Girl with Guys. I'm feeling good. So you're gonna be checking out this video titled A Christian Lady Tried to Convince a Muslim to Convert to Christian. But well, what brought me to Islam is me trying to convince someone else to become a Christian. So we see how that turned out. <laughs> so I was actually, I was living in Hollywood at the time and I was a production manager for like TV and film, mm -hmm. uh, music videos, this and that. And I was very Christian and I, I mean, I was like teaching Sunday school, all this. And there was a colleague of mine that worked on this HBO show with me and he was Muslim mm -hmm. and I was trying to convince him that he should come to church with me so he could, you know, see the truth, of course. Yeah. And yeah, and he was like, thank you, but I'm not at all interested in that. And I said, well, who cares? It's like, you're not signing a contract for life. Like just come to church one time. It's like an hour on a Sunday. Like it's not gonna kill you. If you don't like it, don't come back. And he was like, um, yeah, no, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> and so I was like, what the heck? What has him so stuck on his religion that he won't even come for an hour? Like, oh, this is your religion that cool? You can't, like, hang out for an hour? No. So I said, all right, listen. I have a Bible, and I can quote Bible verses to you all day long, but it doesn't affect you because it's not your book. It's not your verses. It's not your scripture. What do you care? Okay, fine. Give me your book. Give me this Quran or whatever it is that you're reading, your moon and stars worshiping book. And I said, let me read that, and then I'm going to use your text against you to prove to you why none of this makes sense and this is why you should be Christian. That did not go as planned. And soon after, I found myself in a mosque by myself, wow. wandering in with like jeans, ripped jeans, a v neck t shirt, flip flops. And the guy was like, Whoa, so I'm like, let's get a scarf on you if you want a tour. So I was like, Okay. And before I knew it, I was just blown away by the truth of this book that I was supposed to be using for research only and pretty soon I was like I think I know what I need to do and this is hilarious because I've always thought Muslims are crazy people you know I mean I'm just brainwashed by the news here and you know I didn't know anything about it I thought they were just doing some like ritual stuff and blah 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 I didn't know what was going on and so when I start reading the Quran I see all these questions that I've had in Christianity for so long, all of them were answered. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> you guys know about Adam and Eve? You guys know Moses too? What? These are, these are our guys. I'm Christian. These are our dudes. Like, why are you like, yeah. you shouldn't know about this. How do you guys know? Well, I didn't realize how similar Islam is to Christianity. And I'm thankful that I knew as much as I did because Otherwise, had I not known those stories, I would have probably been a little hesitant. Mm. Like, okay, you're telling me this guy throws a stick down and all of a sudden it's a snake. All right, okay, no, no thanks, you know? But I already knew these stories from Christianity, so I was like, wait a second, you guys know he parted the Red Sea? Okay, mm. what else do you know? And then it became more and more interesting, interesting to me. So after, a while I started I was just like inseparable with the Quran I was just walking around everywhere like I remember just walking all over LA just walking like a crazed woman maniac with a big backpack on in my little Quran that was like this big and I'm walking and I'm not even paying attention I'm just reading I'm flipping pages up and I'm walking and I'm walking I'm just trying to absorb every word and then I was like that's it I gotta go yeah I gotta move I gotta get out of here I can't be here and so I decided to do the obvious choice and sell everything I own, pack one suitcase and buy a one-way ticket to Morocco. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So I did that and I, <laughs> I didn't have a job. I didn't have family there, friends. I had nothing, no idea what I'm doing. I don't speak Arabic. I don't speak French and <laughs> no one there speaks English. Amazing good choice um i didn't really know i didn't really know what was going to happen but i knew that i needed to make hijra because i'm living in la and it's like 
I'm like cruising Sunset Boulevard at night, like hanging with celebrities and living this like glamorous life that everyone wants that I could care less about. So I said, I gotta move, I gotta get out of here. And especially if I wanna become Muslim for real, I cannot do that living in Hollywood. Like it's never gonna happen. My friends will never accept this. They'll tease me, I'll just be, you know, just a pile of nothing because everybody's going to be like, okay, what are you, some wannabe Arab? <laughs> okay, you're Muslim, whatever, let's go out. You know, I knew that they weren't going to take me seriously. So I said, okay, that's fine. If my surroundings are going to change who I am, then if I want to change who I am, I should change my surroundings. Yes. So I did that. Moved to Morocco and well, that is decided to take my Shahada there in Casablanca because I was almost done with the Quran, almost done. And I said, oh, wait a minute, I want to wait. It, it took me like two weeks after I arrived to finish the rest of it because I was like, everything makes sense, but I don't want to take the Shahada and become Muslim because I know what a serious decision and life-changing statement that it is. You don't just like undo it and say, no, I was just kidding. I want to be Christian again. I knew that it was something very, very serious. So I said, well, I don't want to have I don't want to have this book that I'm 98% done with and then I become Muslim and all of a sudden the last like, you know, chapter and a half, there's some little like, oh, by the way, this, this, and this. And then I didn't want to be stuck. So I said, okay, let me finish the whole entire thing and then I will take the shot. Mm -hmm. So I did that. That was December 31st, uh, 2010. So it's been over a decade now that I'm Muslim. Wow. Amazing. 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 What? I love how the whole thing started, but I'm just so surprised the way she trying to invite, you know, a Muslim to Christianity actually made that, you know, convert. <laughs> it's so surprising, guys. Like we all heard, she said she had a friend, she invited person to church, and person was adamant, why this and that. And she said that, and she decided to take a step and say, okay, let me just even go to this mosque and see what's going on in this mosque. Then that's how the, her life changed. That's how the whole thing changed. And you know, one thing I always realize about Christians is that when they try to, you know, understand or study or get to know Islam, they are always surprised that um, there are a lot of similarities between the Quran and the Bible. They thought Quran is very, very different from Bible. You no, know, completely different. In which, you no, know, they they are always surprised that okay, Jesus is mentioned in the Quran, Moses, Abraham, all these prophets, all these men, you know, servants of God were mentioned in the Quran. And they'll be like, oh, really? And there are lots of similar. And that's, that's the major. That's when they, they, they always take their steps. That's when the major, you know, <clears throat> change of art start from. Because most of the Christians that actually convert or uh, convert to Islam is because of they didn't know Quran and Bible have similarities. So when they now discover that, ah, so the Quran has this. He has even explained, and most people will be like, okay, Quran has a, a chapter for Mary, Mariam, that is Mary. That's when you get to know about Mary's family and the rest. So most of them will say that, okay, because, you know, it's giving you more f full details about this, you know, people in the Bible, this, you know, children of God in the Bible than the way they sit in the by um in, in, in the this children of God in the Quran than the way they sit in the Bible. I'm sure that's one of the that's one thing that gave her a change of heart. The fact that she was surprised and got to know that wow, Quran has a lot of similarities from you no know, <coughs> with the Bible. Then that's how our journey started. Then she said, um, when she wanted to take a shahada, she she was not 100 percent sure if the, it was the right thing she was doing because she was still in the middle, in between, on the one leg in, one leg out, whether she should stick to her former religious Christianity or she should just you know convert to Islam. 
there's one point that she made I want to talk about. She said that um, when she became a Muslim, she could not actually face people around people around her, people in her environment because she was thinking of what people would say. You know, she's a, you know she's a she's a celebrity. She's a very popular person, so she she was thinking of what people would say. So instead of her facing people and people questioning her of you know her faith in God and why she you know change her religion, it, the best for her was to change the environment but in my own opinion in my own opinion i don't think changing an environment matters even though it is a good thing you tend to you know do what you want to do without being pressurized without you thinking of what people will say or how the environment or the the society will see you because when you go to a new environment nobody knows you and it's just like you're starting your life a fresh in different place but I um, yeah, will not buy the idea of you, you know, change your environment because you're thinking of what people say. Let them talk. People will surely talk. They will always say something. You no, know, whether you do good or bad, whatever you do, people will have something to say. So you just have to face it and you know, you know what you did was right. You didn't do the wrong thing. So there was no need of you trying to switch or change environment but it was a good one though i really enjoyed that convert like a revert story it was really interesting and i got a lot from me thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like share and comment i'll see you in the next one bye